وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول A questioner asked, I am considering marrying a revert brother who has been Muslim for two and a half years. Would it be best to marry him or someone else who is more grounded in knowledge? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala abdillahi wa rasulih nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. I think when choosing someone to marry, it's really important that you look at a wide range of factors and a wide range give consideration to a number of different things. So in this question, what is mentioned is that there is a revert Muslim brother who has been two and a half years Muslim. Would it be best to marry him or someone more grounded in knowledge? Really, that in itself is not uh, enough information. And also, it, it's, it really needs to be thought of a little bit differently. So the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at his religious commitment. Now, no doubt, knowledge is a part of that, but religious commitment, I would describe it slightly differently. Out of the knowledge that he has, how much of that knowledge is he putting into practice every day? In fact, you see that this is a person who every time they get knowledge, they put it into practice as best they can. And they are actively trying to get more knowledge and trying to learn the religion, then that is a very, very good sign. But somebody who is not practicing at all and is saying that, you know, I've been Muslim two and a half years, I need more time, then that's probably not a very good idea. It's not the right type of person to marry. And it's not down to the number of years because somebody could have been Muslim just two months or six months, but could be really have become very firm in the religion and very dedicated to practicing and very consistent and trying their very best and learning actively, surrounding themselves with good people. So it's not really down to the number of years, but it's down to, or even down to the amount of knowledge per se, but more to do with what they are doing with that knowledge and whether they're implementing it and whether they have the signs that they are actively trying to seek more and actively trying to grow within the religion. The second consideration is their character, because there are people who are people of knowledge, they're people of goodness, people who are uh, practicing the religion of Islam, but in terms of character, the character might not be the right person to marry. So that could be down to the kind of softness of character, gentleness, patience, forbearance, uh, kindness, consideration, and things like that. Uh, the next thing to consider, which I believe is extremely important, is to consider compatibility. So compatibility is a very general word, which basically means that the two of you will, inshallah, work, be, you know, the, the relationship would work, you would be good together. And that doesn't mean you have to be the same. Uh, it just means that you have to be comfortable. So uh, the fact that you mentioned that this is a revert Muslim brother suggests that the person writing this uh, question isn't a revert. So again, you know, the culture you are coming from within Islam, your family's cultural background, how much would that suit this revert Muslim brother? Would he manage it okay? Would they be really understanding and kind of make him comfortable? Or would he feel really out of place? Would he be expected to do things that he couldn't do? Again, there's no fast, you know, perfect answer to that question for everybody because different families have different sort of expectations. Are your expectations consistent with, a, with this revert brother? So what you hope for and what you would love to happen and what you would want, is that consistent with what, where he is and where, what he wants? And likewise, the other way around, in terms of your lifestyle, in terms of your um, sort of, uh, goals, whether it be financially, whether it be children, whether it be seeking knowledge, whether it be travel and so on, are they compatible with this brother? So compatibility is really important. Are the two of you generally compatible in terms of, you know, your general sort of character, 
culture and expectations and so on. That's also really important to look at to make sure you can be different, but the important thing is compatibility. So I would say that those three things, there are others, but those three things are a good place to start. I would also urge you that if you do want to marry this revert Muslim brother who has been Muslim for two and a half years, I would honestly suggest that the communication is between him and between your father. If your father is not available for some reason, then uh, for him to have appointed someone to take that responsibility from your close relatives, like a brother, for example. Uh, but ultimately, if your father is around, then it is his responsibility to talk to this brother. Don't reach out to him by yourself. Don't communicate with him by yourself because ultimately that's not going to bring you any barakah. It's not going to bring you any good. Uh, so my strong advice would be that if you want to approach this brother for marriage, that you ask your father to approach him. And inshallah ta'ala, this will be something like a, a way also to a safety, guard, a safety net or a safeguard for yourself to make sure that you're making the right decision, to have someone look over that decision and, and concur that this person in their religious commitment and in their character and in their compatibility is someone that would work, that would work for you. And my final piece of advice would be that if it does go ahead and you have the permission of your wali, your father primarily, whoever else is your wali, to, uh, to go ahead with the marriage, that I would suggest that you do the nikah relatively quickly because delaying the nikah is something that we see from a lot of brothers and sisters that causes a great deal of trouble because there is a pressure on the couple to talk, to chat, to be free with each other, but they haven't yet done the nikah. So I would say to do the nikah as quickly as possible uh, would be the way to go about it. So that would be my advice on that particular question and Allah Azza wa Jalla knows best. If you have any questions you'd like to see answered as part of this series, and you can email us at questions at amau.org.